Hello, hello, I've got the wrong screen. Hello, hello, there we go, that's better. How are you doing? Very nice to have you with us. It is number 248, 248 of This Week in WordPress. Uh, we are WP Builds and we're joined by two very, very nice people today. Uh, they're probably both of them getting up quite early. I don't know how the whole daylight saving thing, because we had that swap over at some point. Is it not that? It's probably got better than rather than worse, has it? You don't know. It's 9 a.m. here. No, oh, that's not so bad. Okay, no. I don't feel quite so bad. I'd like to let you. I'd like to let you believe that we get up ungodly early <laughs> yeah, yeah. for you, but it's but it's Monday case. morning, Michelle. So that was <laughs> the true. that was the voice of Michelle Frechette. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, yeah, really good. I took a week off last week to spend a bit of time with the the family. Nice. I don't know. I don't know what the sort of routine over there is, but over here that day is a is a what we call like a bank holiday so last monday was a bank holiday and basically everything is shot the the sort of essential stuff is open so it was apropos for me to take a day off and uh, we hung out and just kicked back with the kids and it was yeah really really nice so michelle is the director of community engagement for stella wp at liquid web michelle i'm on your old longer one oh, if that's all right oh it <laughs> <laughs> okay i'll paraphrase she does tons in the wordpress community um, she's got a podcast called WP Cafe Talk. She runs underrepresented in tech, or she's the co-founder of, I should say, uh, creator of WP Career Pages. She's on the board for Big Orange Heart. Uh, she lives in Rochester, New York. She loves taking photographs. She puts them online for free. Um, <laughs> and you can find out more at meetmichelle.online. H- how was that? <laughs> That was good. That was okay. good. I'll take it. <laughs> yes, thank you. And we've also got Courtney. Hello, Courtney. How are you? Hello. It's good to see you. Yeah. Thank you for joining us once again. Courtney is the is an open source developer advocate, a GoDaddy oh. Pro, who are our fine sponsors, as you'll see in a moment on our homepage. Uh, she is a WordPress training team faculty member and helps fund WordPress contributors through the WP community collective actually speaking of which if you go back a few weeks we had the um we had you on the podcast the wp tavern podcast yeah. talking about that would you just very briefly because we're not going to be covering that just yeah. tell us what the wp community collective is because it's a it's a dead cool project that maybe some people haven't heard of yeah so the really short version is let's fund contributors um, <laughs> and what does that mean well any of the 21 to make wordpress teams Anything along the lines of, um, you might have seen over the weekend on Twitter that when Stina was mentioning this, uh, getting diverse speakers to WordCamps, if they are selected to speak, could fall within that purview. Anything that relates to an official WordPress event or one of the WordPress teams, let's get people funded so that financial barriers are no longer a constraint. Um, We are right now at Our website will show about halfway towards the goal. We're counting the general fund of funding Alex Stein as the accessibility contributor. When that goal is met, then Alex will be funded for six months at about five to 10 hours a week, as Alex would like to do this part-time to work on accessibility issues throughout the WordPress project, whether that is on the software release or on some of our make websites or the learn website or lots of places. Alex is a fantastic person and does amazing dev work. Um, We have a couple more. We have a grant that is processing. We had received some funding as a grant. So that is not yet reflected, but it will be reflected on our website soon. So that puts us at 75% of the way towards getting Alex funded. We're really excited about it. Um, And then we'll start looking into what maybe some of our next areas of where else should we get contributors funded should look like. And it simplifies whether it is Nathan as a person saying, I have money and I'm going to stuff it in an envelope and send it to a contributor. No. Or a corporation, <laughs> an organization of any sort, any size um, that wants to, again, match up with that. Maybe they've got some funding, but they don't have staff hours, so they would like to do things this way. Um, so it's a great opportunity to get contributors funded. Yeah, so WP Community Collective sort of sits in the middle between people who've got money and don't necessarily know what to do with it and people yeah. who need some funding. And so you act as that sort of bridge sitting in the middle. The episode that I was mentioning there is at number 66 on the WP Tavern website. If you go to WPTavern.com and then you hit this little podcast button, all of the podcast episodes appear. And number 66 is Say Reed and Courtney uh, talking about this in, in far greater depth. And it's a really worthwhile 
worthwhile thing to check out. Anyway, thank you, uh, Courtney, for joining us. Really appreciate it. We are going to talk about the WordPress news. That's what we do each and every week. Just a couple of quick things before we begin. Ooh, let's get rid of that little naggy thing. Um, this is our website, wpbuilds.com. The, the op opportunity to subscribe, we are, we are not the spammy people that we might talk about later. Um, really, you get two emails a week, and it's just to say, we produced a piece of content. Here's some paraphrase stuff about it. And do that by clicking in this box here. Go and sign up in that way. As you can see, GoDaddy Pro, who currently work for, they are the sponsors of the WP Builds podcast, has been for a very, very long time, and it's greatly appreciated certainly keeps the lights on if you're joining us and you want to share this probably the easiest way uh, is to go to your social channel of choice and share the link wpbuilds.com forward slash live if you head there it's youtube comments so you need a google account i believe that you can't do it anonymously um so you know that's just de rigueur alternatively if you go to our facebook group you can do it there wpbuilds.com forward slash facebook you can find the post it'll be alerted to you at some point but you do need to let us know who you are because uh facebook anonymize that and you can do that by going to chat dot restream dot io forward slash f and we will know who you are so please feel free to share it oh good grief we got a few comments coming in this is nice um nomad skateboarding i'm just gonna say thank you to nomad skateboarding he knows what i'm saying thank you for um appreciate it he's coming from tijuana in mexico i hope i pronounced that right i think i did no, um, not at all. right on the other side of the, <laughs> right on the, did i did i screw it up tijuana oh, okay i was pretty close i'd say i got 80 <laughs> percent um on the other you side of the like world a true Brit. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, indeed. Yeah, mashing it up. Uh, Valencia is the destination at the moment of Peach and Neri. Very nice to see you. Thank you for joining us also. This is one of those interesting ones where one of you two, Courtney and Michelle, have paired your account with this this app and it's allowed other people to get sucked to so i appreciate that that's brilliant um there we go so it, thank it was you courtney because for... i have no idea what you're talking about okay well <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna butcher your name as well so i'm really sorry about it but i'm gonna say ahan sanur oh i'm so sorry about that um but yeah thanks for joining us and as always peter ingersoll brings in the weather um, he's in Connecticut after a record-breaking heat last week. Nice to hear, Peter. We're back to more reasonable weather. It's a nice 15 degrees centigrade on the cloudy sky. 15? We dream of 15 here in Yorkshire. It's about seven at the moment. There's this Monty Python sketch called The Four Yorkshiremen. Just go and Google it and you'll know what I'm on about. We dream of seven degrees. <laughs> we were um, close to 30 last week, Nathan. Oh, 30, which is like centigrade. 85. Yeah, 30 Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah we... We've had a heat wave. I'm sure Michelle even felt some of that. She's between Peter and yeah. I. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's, yeah. uh, you know. But I'm not... only at 46 today, which is about eight Celsius. So, right. I'm not in a good mood now. You've put me off. Um, <laughs> but thank you very much for joining us. Also, Sonal, thank you very much uh, for joining us. A nice introduction to, for Michelle from Nathan. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, it was a bit rushed. Jess Frick, hello from gloomy central Florida. That's more like it. We like the gloom. It's raining here today, <laughs> 20 degrees centigrade, which is a lovely reprieve from the usual 26. And the comments just keep coming. Oh, Jess is saying nice things about your WP Community Collective. That's great. Mm -hmm. And I could keep going. Rob Cairns, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. But we got things to say. Hello from Berlin, Patrick Posner. Uh, thank you very much. I'm sorry if I missed anybody out. Oh, somebody here. Um, Matt, um, oh, it's got an, It's got some kind of punctuation mark above the A. I don't know what it does. I'm going to say man's. Hello <laughs> from Sweden. I'm so sorry. But let's get on with the WordPressy news, shall we? So the first thing up is not that one. We've already done that. There's the podcast episode that we mentioned. We're going to talk about something that a guest who was on a couple of weeks ago, James Giroux. I don't know if you were here a couple of weeks ago. He was on. And uh, he's got a really new direction in the WordPress space. And Sarah Gooding has written about it on WP Tavern. It's called Team WP. Now, 
I confess I'm not really all that au fait with what Team WP is. I did read this, but for some reason it just didn't click with me. I couldn't quite work out what it was. But my understanding is that he's trying to figure out... Well, I'll, I'll read because it's probably better. Um, it's a project that aims to advocate for open, open people-first workplaces in the WordPress ecosystem. And his first initiative is to launch the Team Experience Index, a benchmark employee engagement survey designed specifically for, for people working in the world of WordPress. He goes on to say, and I quote James... The distributed nature of WordPress companies means that they often lack the resources and knowledge to create open, truly open, people-first workplaces. The Team Experience Index fills this gap by providing insights and benchmarks that help companies identify strengths and areas for improvement, fostering an open, collaborative, and innovative work culture. So I guess the idea really is to is to knock teams' heads together and try to figure out, well, what is it in your process that works well? What is it that we in our team do well? And figure out some sort of way that we can all help each other. Now, obviously, on the commercial side, that seems a little bit peculiar. You might want to keep some of those cards close to your chest. But I, I just think this is a really nice initiative. There is a link. Uh, it's buried right at the bottom of the article. It says, complete the survey. And it takes you to the survey. And it's a sort of four or five minute fill. Um, you can you can sort of go through the whole thing without op opting into certain things. There are certain requirements, indicated fields are required, but most of it is not. And I think really, um, given that he's starting out in his new direction, it might be quite a nice idea if you're part of a team to go fill that out. I don't know if Courtney or Michelle saw this or have been in touch with James about it or anything. A little bit. I um, I you know I understand that you know the idea of anonymous versus not anonymous. When you are the director of community engagement at Stellar WP and you put that in there, you no longer are anonymous, right? So I am the only one with my title. So my name may not be associated with it, but certainly it would be it would not be difficult to know who I am. However, you, if you're going to do the survey, you just have to trust that, um, that James is not going to use that information in a way that would out you for having given any opinion on what's happening at your at your place of employment. Um, one of the things that James has talked about a lot in the past is that emotional safety in the workplace. And I think that that has a lot to do with um, the impetus behind his project here. Uh, some of the, the least favorite words that you can ever hear are, can we talk? Or I need to talk to you, <laughs> yeah. right? Those are words that often come with like that dread, that pit, um, in your stomach, having that reaction, that visceral reaction to the words like that. And, you know, one of the things I've tried to, and I'm, I'm not, I don't have anybody under me now where I am, but for years I was uh, over a staff and that was something I would never do. I would say, Hey, I have questions about X, Y, Z, or I have a new project idea about X, Y, Z. When do you have time that you could chat about it? So that it takes that fear of this thing. There's no like, oh my God, what does she want to talk to me about? And that's just one tiny little thing about creating um, workplace security, right? So, and, and that emotional safety in, in the workplace. And so I think that's a lot of the impetus behind what James is doing, talking about the fact that when we work remotely, you can't even say like, I could say, hey, do you have a minute to talk? Or we need to talk, right? But yeah. if you see it written in Slack, it all says the same thing because there's no inflection. Yeah. And so with remote with remote work, it becomes an even more, there's more at stake, right? Because we don't know what's that somebody's sitting at their desk. We don't want to like keystroke log and make sure that the mouse is moving and nobody wants that kind of a workplace environment. So what can we do within our workplaces to make sure that while we are also while we are being productive, we also have the safety and security that comes behind working in a team that absolutely values you and is not distrusting of you or making you want to leave and go someplace else. Hmm. Thank you. I mean, I paraphrase. James, if you're listening, please chime in. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. If, I, if I got yes. that wrong, let me know. Yeah, but I, I think you. that that has a lot to do with it. Uh, yeah. Courtney, anything on this? I think it could be really valuable when I've worked for very small companies that I've worked for really big companies. Um, the idea of internal teams being more unified. And I see this even inside of the WordPress project too, where uh, during COVID I saw, you know, we, we're now at 21 teams in the project. Um, learning how to communicate across teams, learning that we're all part of one bigger team and how to leverage each other's strengths. I think that's really valuable insight 
And I think that idea, like Michelle is saying, of some of the peopling skills that go with it <laughs> uh, is, is, is really helpful. It's what it comes down to is um, learning how to just be a team itself. And I, so I'm intrigued. I spoke with James a little about it at Work Campasia. Um, I'm excited to see the launch happening. You can, obviously, what we've been talking about here really is the survey in which he's trying to ga gather some information. And the information he will be revealing, says in the article anyway, uh, during WordCamp Europe. So it'll be widely publicized. But the, the website itself that James is working on is over at teamwp.co. Um, yeah, so you can go and check it out there. Thank you for your contributions to that. Next piece I've got is is over at Cadence WP. This is it's a little bit older. The really probably a couple of weeks something like that. But I had a week off, and so I thought this was quite a nice one. Uh, ben Rittner, who I I I think he was the the singular founder of Cadence WP. He um yes. he's written a piece called WordPress six point two and the state of full site editing which um, now I think really has been just renamed uh, site editing. Um, and he was talking about the fact that in WordPress 6.2, there's a lot of great new features. We've been over that multiple times. We've seen it all. I imagine by now most people have played and found some part of the UI that's new because there certainly was quite a lot in there. I continue to love the way that new patterns or any patterns are shown to me in the post editor. That I think is dead cool. That's my number one great thing. But Ben talks about, where he's at with 6.2 in terms of his uh, product. And really, the the thing that I think is grind, grinding him to a halt is just that some pieces of the full site editing experience, particularly around the header and navigation comes up. It feels that we're not quite there yet. And I my experience has been so far, and I've downloaded all of the beta releases of 6.2 and then the stable version of 6.2 and had a play. And I, I just keep coming back to classic themes for headers particularly because of the state of the, just the capability to be able to, I don't know, modify things in a really straightforward way that I'm familiar with. I'm still there. I can't unpick that. There just doesn't seem to be quite enough yet packed into the navigation block. It, not in terms of nesting pages and posts and all of that, more to do with the ability to just quickly pick a style, set some fairly simple defaults, and you're out of there, and it's done, and it took you moments, whereas in full site editing, I, I just don't see that. So that's his little, it's not really a gripe. I just think what he's saying is, let's wait. Somebody, somewhere, whether it's the core team or some third-party developer, this is a, an area of rich pickings. If somebody comes along with, a, I don't know, a, an alternative navigation block, think, think advanced custom fields, which just improved custom fields. We could have the same thing here, couldn't we? You know, um, a header builder or a navigation block that you can use that somebody else has created. The groundwork has been laid by the project. But for me, at least, it's not quite there yet. I'm going to turn that one over to Courtney first. I think you've got some thoughts on this. Yeah. So one of the things I would say out of the box here is a tip or a trick. If your main issue is literally just creating your navigation menu, go use a classic theme, make your navigation menu, then switch over to a block theme because you can pull in yep. your your navigation menus already done from a classic theme. I know that that experience of the current navigation block and the whole setup of it is probably the one area of refinement we need the most work in. There were some good advances that were going to come out in 6.2, but unfortunately I got punted. Probably we'll see in 6.3, although I can't confirm that yet. Um, and if you're really interested in testing kind of where that's going, if you install the Gutenberg plugin, which you don't have to do, but if you really want to try it out, the Gutenberg plugin will allow you to turn on that navigation block experience that we might see. Um, other thoughts that I have towards this, uh, you know, I've been creating some of the materials on learn.wordpress.org specifically around the nav block. And so I keep a close watch on what's going on with that to figure out when to revise these things. Um, it's It needs some more design controls. Yeah, that's so what it. what Nathan's point was is that yep. you need a user interface of design controls for like you wanted more rounded effects around the words so that they were almost button like and things. And so, um, yeah, we, we still have some work to clean up in that. And I think even if we're heading into phase three, that doesn't mean phase two work like the nav block is just going to be left to squander. We have to continue iterating upon that. The other thought that I have is that overall themes are having more options as WordPress issues right, more releases. Right, yeah. There are more options to slowly progress what was considered a classic theme 
um, over to, that would be a theme that uses customizer and think about the default themes before 2022. Um, so those older default themes, they now can bring, we have a way to bring the nav blocks, uh, the nav, the nav menus over and interface them into classic. We can also now bring widgets across as well. Uh, so they're bringing, and we can also do the theme JSON inside of classic themes. So they're creating these on ramps so that classic themes can, if they wish to say classic, they can do that. Um, that will continue working. But if they wish to begin that on ramp towards being a site editor compatible block based theme, that's a mouthful then they have yeah. <laughs> some ways to slowly start that process. Because when you've got a massive user base, you can't just quickly pivot. That's a code refactor. You now need to support, you know, potentially both, both classic and block simultaneously with more variables. And so that creates a lot more user testing in your process of migration. Um, so I'm sure that it, it will eventually happen for Cadence. It's just that progression yeah. is there. Yeah. It's kind of funny. I bet every single WordPress user who's been using WordPress for any amount of time probably has the same thought in their head that I do, which is, why doesn't it do everything that I want um, <laughs> out, of the, out of the box? And of course, the 80-20 rule applies. If if 80% of the people need it, it's probably worth putting into core. And the things that I need are not 80-20. There's probably just me, one versus 700 million or whatever the, the usage <laughs> count is. Um, You're the but outlier, yeah, Nathan. Yeah, <laughs> interesting, <laughs> interesting, though, that uh, from the, the product maker's perspective, you know, trying to work out what how this is going to work in the future, you know, if, if the customizer becomes less and less used, which I presume over time it will, then how do you get your product to still have the same features and the same goodies that you've, you know, you've been promoting and selling for years and years and years? Anything about this, Michelle? I think Courtney said it all really mm -hmm. well. I just, I, um, I work with uh, Ben over at Stellar WP and I think the world of him. And so I listen to a lot of what he has to say. And I also build almost exclusively with Cadence now. So my, uh, my sites are in his hands. <laughs> yeah. I actually noticed that James's, um, James's new website is team, w team, WP.co is, is also built on Cadence. And uh, yeah, so there you go. It's very popular. Right. Okay. Let's move on. This is now we're moving on to an SEO plugin. This is Yoast. Uh, so they've recently dropped a new update, you know, the, the usual arrangement of features. So for example, you've now got this different preview of the way that your your links will look in, in mobile and um, and desktop. But the, the main thing here, which I think is of interest to most people, is that they are dropping support for, wait for it, PHP 5.6. Now, I'm praying that everybody who is listening to this show has not a single website anywhere near PHP 5. Point anything, but you never know, right? It is possible. There are there are all sorts of things going on out there. But um, what they're essentially saying is our plugin, at least from now on, uh, will only be supporting PHP 7.2.5 or higher, plus, this is also interesting, uh, WordPress 6.0. Now, given given the ease of updating WordPress, hopefully that bit at least was a no-brainer because you literally click a button and come back a moment later. But the PHP bit may be a bit more difficult. If you're on a, a managed WordPress host, I'm guessing you can either get in touch with them or probably select something in a drop-down somewhere to see... You know, let's see if we can get onto eight point something and test things out and so on. But um, but it, it's just curious because Sarah makes the point that in the past, Yoast have been actually fairly influential. Sorry, I should have said this is a piece on WP Tavern. Sarah Gooding wrote it again. Um, she makes the point that Yoast in the past have been a real th force for for change. In the in the past, they have said, "Look, our plugin, which is really popular." We we are warning you. They had an undismissible warning in previous versions. So this was quite a while ago. I think it was version. Oh yeah, it says here. Look, version four point five in twenty seventeen. Their estimated six point five million users were confronted with a warning which they couldn't get rid of, saying you've got to update to PHP seven. So although it may be a bit of an irritation if you've got one of these sites, you know. It, to me, this falls into the actually quite useful use of notifications as opposed to an advert for an upgrade, which most people seem to think is a bad idea. This one is getting people onto secure versions. You know, PHP 5 point anything, that's not the future. In fact, it's probably riddled with problems. So go and get yourself updated, and Yoast are going to be encouraging you to do that. So bravo from me, at least anyway. So over to either of you. 
PHP compatibility is a big issue in the WordPress project, we'll say. Um, right now, Core itself is not compatible for any of the versions that are currently supported. Um, it is beta compatible, not fully compatible with any of the versions of PHP that are currently supported. So I am excited to see that. Um, and the current versions are um, uh, beyond 7.4, like 8. 8.1, 8.2 are currently supported PHP versions. So if you're running something that is as old as any of those fives, my goodness, um, you need to go into your hosting panel and see what version of PHP that you are running. Do thorough tests with this because um, some plugins may or may not be compatible with newer versions of PHP. I'm glad to see that Yoast is going in that direction. And there's also a really good plugin that while you are running this live and or testing might be helpful for you. It is the rollback update failure. Oh, seamlessly, be... we did that, yeah. Courtney. <laughs> like, we, like we practiced that earlier. <laughs> Maybe. It is not to be confused with the one that looks almost identical that says the word core in it, even though this is from the core contributors as well. This one is so that any plugin, the one that just says rollback update failure, uh, WordPress 6.2 introduced a move directory feature. What this all comes down to is that if you were running a plugin and you went to update it and it did not support the version of PHP that you are running, this would help you gracefully roll back to the last version so that your site stays up and working. Um, again, don't cowboy code, don't, don't run updates on live production, run your tests, but also this plugin can help gather some of that data for you of, oh, this plugin tried to update and it's incompatible with your PHP. So we're going to roll back to the earlier version so that your site keeps working. Um, so I really appreciate the folks at Yoast doing what they do as far as you know PHP versioning, but also they generally have a good, I don't know, I want to give them some praise about the way that they handle things like the environment, the impact that our, yeah. our websites have on the yeah. environment. and. And a, and a topic that we'll cover later. So this is a, on the screen. Sorry if you're listening to this after the fact, but um, on the screen, we've got a pie chart which represents the PHP versions. And more than half of it, 53.6%, would appear to be PHP 7.4. So the, uh, oh, and then 9% seem to be 7.3. Uh, a further 6.5% are 7.2. So realistically, we're... We are very much getting towards three quarters of the user base of WordPress at the moment. Would in fact, with the eight point two, eight point one, and eight thrown in as well, we're, we're probably more like 80, 85 percent, something like that. So, chances are that you'll be secure. But yeah, as Courtney says, if you if you get this warning from Yoast, which I presume they're going to do again, I don't know in what manner they're going to roll this out. Uh, if you do get this warning from Yoast, like just take it seriously. It's not it's not really a, a thing that you should just ignore. Um, I think this is definitely a, a good piece of community citizenship. Thank you, Yost, for doing that. Um, Michelle, sorry. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's, uh, I love how forward thinking they always are and the, that they really do take into account more than just what their plugin does, right? So they think about the, um, the whole community. They think about the ecology of what they're doing and they make sure that what they're doing is supported within, um, you know, for your website and so that everything that you're using it on is um, is covered. I think they do a great job. Uh, Jess Frick seems to agree. Thank you for staying in the comments, Jess. High five to Yoast for making this happen. She says, looking forward to when we can drop 5.6 for core as well. Yeah, so mm, Jess, who's been on the show many times, including the last time we had the show, uh, works for Pressable. So skin in the game there. Um, they're obviously supporting all of the latest versions as well. I don't know if, Jess, if you even go back to anything like 5.6, maybe there's something to be said there. And also touching on the topic we had a moment ago, Nomad Skateboarding, I feel that the nav block has a ways to go. Yeah, um, so it'd be interesting to see what, what Courtney was saying about that and whether or not the, the later version is going to be significantly better. Um, my other thoughts, many of the things missing included in other themes shouldn't be there for accessibility. Things should be, shouldn't be sliding. For example, thank you, Nomad Skateboarding and Elliot from down the road from me. Hello. I was in Bridlington this week, Elliot. I went to Bempton Cliffs and looked at all the lovely birds 
Um, <laughs> that's apropos of absolutely nothing to do with WordPress, <laughs> but he lives where I went. So that was really You nice. should have grabbed a cup of tea together. Yeah, Isn't I went with my family and I thought, Brits no, do. that'll be purgatory <laughs> for him to, uh, to watch me trying to encourage my children to stay the course with the birds. You know, you, know, you take small children to something like birds and you're really fascinated by looking at them for hours and they've seen three birds and it's like, yeah, dad. Enough of the birds. Let's get let's get home, shall we? I was like, oh, yeah, really enjoy it. Puffins. Have you ever seen puffins? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Super yeah. cute. Super Not in cute person. No, yeah. I want to though. Yeah, there's a new David Attenborough uh, show. I don't know if it has made it to your side of the pond. It's called um, something like oh something Isles, Wild Isles, or something like that. It's all about Britain this time, and they feature puffins. And man, are they cute! <laughs> It's like, it's like the koala of the bird world. Aww. There's the title for this week, the there koala of the bird world. I'm going to write that down in a minute. Um, okay, so there we go. Thank you to Yoast. Uh, that's an excellent endeavor. And using your clout for good. Great. Oh, wow. So this is, this is fascinating. So I don't know if you know, but very soon, the word, in fact, really soon, uh, May 27th, 2023, is 20 years to the day when Matt Mullenweg and his co-founder, Mike Little, uh, first forked the B2 project and WordPress was born. Since then, a lot has happened. And at the 10-year anniversary, a, a book was created. And, and I don't actually know if it was a, a physical book. I've read it on a, as a PDF or something. In fact, the first time I interviewed Matt Mullenweg, I read the entire book just so that I, I had some good questions lined up. Well, anyway... 10 years have gone since that book was published, and now we're on the second version, if you like, it's, and it's called Milestones. Maybe it's Milestones Volume 2 or something. Oh, no, 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 here we go. Milestones, the story of WordPress, 2023 to 13. The next version that's coming up is going to be called Building Blocks, very good, um, the evolution of WordPress, and it's going to span the period since the last book, 20. 13 to 2023. Now, I don't know if this is something which has happened before or it's really common, but the, the enterprise of writing this book is a community endeavor. I mean, I'm guessing from what is written in here, they commissioned, and I'm just going to use the word project management's commissioned a book last year to document since it's since the first commissioned work. So obviously somebody somewhere has been paid to sort of steer the project. Regrettably, I don't know who that is. But if you want to contribute or you think that there's something perhaps missing or that needs amending or what have you, it, it's all on GitHub. Check it out. There's all the, what a great use of GitHub, open sourcing a book and writing it. So here we go. You can see the chapters are somewhat out of order given the, you know, the, the numbering system that they've got, but it basically goes one through how many, chapter 16. Chapter 16 is all about hopefully the next 10 years. Um, but I picked one at random. I just picked the pandemic one because, you know, that was quite an interesting period of time for me, at least. And there it is on the screen. You can see all of the words, all the links provided. Uh, they're fairly short chapters. I imagine they're sort of 5,000 words, three, 5,000 words, something like that. But if you if you wish to go and amend things, then you can. And open sourcing a book. Yay. Yay, WordPress. Um, so there you go. If you want to do that, the URL for that is it's over on make.wordpress.org, and I will put the link in the show notes. But it's uh, essentially the article is by Jonathan Pantani, and it's called Building Blocks, the Evolution of WordPress 2013 to 2023. So you can contribute, for provide feedback. So, again, open to you two. I love it. I think it's awesome, and I can't wait to read it. <laughs> Did you read I the first one? No, but I didn't know the first one existed, but now I have to spend like the rest of this week. It, I just, is it on Audible? Because I would love to listen to it. I, it should be read by <laughs> Matt, but no, it, <laughs> couldn't I just listen to Matt read it? I, yeah. His voice can be so charming. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, it, uh, you can, Michelle, actually, there is a, an EPUB format to the first version that okay. you can um, find and download and manually do the work of loading it like if you're using kindle or something like that where you want sure. that ebook type of experience unless you'd like to read it on your laptop go for it <laughs> but i imagine that there would be software out there which would read it for you i'm i'm imagining oh, sure. that that kind of software probably is getting better and better but maybe it would still be a little bit robotic but the the first one is actually genuine like i was really interested in it it, it did like it's not long you'll have it finished in a morning 
Um, if you're a fairly quick reader, probably significantly less. It's not huge, super huge, but it just it's just fascinating seeing how this whole thing grew up in an era that really now just doesn't seem to exist. You know, there's so much profit online, and that was back in the day when everybody was just trying to work out what the internet was for. And so projects like this, there was no hint of it becoming uh, what it is now. I mean, it, it, when Matt reads that book, and I don't suppose he spends a great deal of time reading that book back to himself, but should he do that, there must be just moments where he pinches himself thinking, what? <laughs> ha- I was going to become a sax player or whatever it is, you know, and, and here I am doing this gigantically important piece of work. It's, yeah, fascinating. So go and go and contribute. That's, um, you know, really nice little project. Right. I, I love the idea of using GitHub to put books up there for the public right. as well. I think that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, really interesting. Really, really mm-hmm. interesting. Um, okay, let's move on. All right, so uh, I, I don't really know ev- ever how to approach these things without seemingly causing controversy but here we go wordpress gears up for second women a non-binary release squad yet again we're relying on sarah gooding who's been reporting uh this week thank you sarah um wordpress executive director josepha hayden chomposi is coordinating a second women and non-binary release squad for version 6.4 now that's mooted to land much later in the year towards christmas november 2023 Um, The last time this was done was in 2020. My impression of that release was that it was entirely successful. It was for 5.6 Simone, and the words here are, it was led by an all-women and non-binary identifying release squad, which was the first time that had happened. Uh, I'm going to quote from Josepha. um, Having a release squad comprising of... Now, I don't actually know how to pronounce that word. You're going to have to forgive me. I've seen it loads of times, but I don't know how to say it. The word is spelled F-O-L-X, and I've never said it out loud. It's like F-O-L-K-S. Folks. Yes. Mm -hmm. Really? So is that a... That's a... That's okay. There you go. Um, comprising of folks we don't typically see in Tology um, and has a goal of increasing the number of underrepresented people who have experience maintaining, managing, and shipping software in an open source project. All contributors to the release and release process are welcome. So the, the idea is that this is being announced earlier than it possibly could have been in order that people who want to get involved but don't have experience with doing anything like this before can sort of piggyback if you like during the next release which is going to be 6.3 now that is mooted from july i believe something like july um and if you're feeling that you want to be part of this team for 6.4 but you don't have the necessary experience well the idea is that you can do some kind of mirroring process you know you, you want to be involved in this bit uh, Okay, let's let's back, let's get you together with the person who's going to do it in the next cycle, and then hopefully there'll be a release squad ready to go, primed, full of all the knowledge that they need by the time six point four comes around. Um, this kind of subject always leads to controversy. There are some comments further down. I'm I'm not going to put them onto the screen, but you know they express an opinion which is entirely different to mine. Put it that way, and. So this is what we got. I, I like this kind of stuff. I know it's not to everybody's taste, but, it, you know, I'm happy with it. I'm going to give this one straight to Michelle because I think this is an area in particular that she's got a great deal of interest in. I, I think both Courtney and I do, having been on the previous release squad. Uh, one of the things, I will speak from the PR side of things, though, because I am not a coder, as we know. <laughs> and Courtney has a lot more um, uh, experience with that. You might be surprised. <laughs> well... <laughs> The technical <laughs> side of things, anyway. So what I will say is that the when when this happened the, for the first time in 2020, um, there was so much controversy around it. And let's just say the block list on my Twitter account like grew by leaps and bounds because some of us who are more public were being publicly attacked for our opinions. Oh, I have a cat that's really annoying me. Get down. Um, <laughs> oh, that's like so annoying. Um, <laughs> You know, and things like the Facebook group, like the Advanced uh, WordPress Facebook group, uh, on Twitter, of course, there's, and, and in the comments of uh, blog posts uh, like on Tavern and on uh, WordPress.org. And so, you know, I, I always say, like, some of us who have thicker skin suffer the, the, um, or the slings and arrows of those that like to make that controversy in such a horrible way. But 
what it did for me was show me who was who in the WordPress community and who was afraid to be who in the WordPress community. Meaning, if you scroll down on that Tavern article right now, and I'm not asking you to do it, but I, if, if, so, if one were to, the two comments that are there right now are anonymized. So at the very least, if you want to come and attack women and non-binary people, have the decency to put your name to it so that we know who to avoid, right? So if you just want to be anonymous, you may as well just, you know, go slog off or something because the rest of us don't care who you are if you don't even want to put a name to your disappointment in the whole process. But the, the, the truth of the matter is... Sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me fit. Let me fit. No, yeah, I <laughs> I'm going to let you finish. Isn't that what Kanye said? Um, but the truth is the, of the matter is last time it was like, well, then we're just going to sit back and watch y'all fail. But we didn't fail. Right. So like there are so many talented people in WordPress that to say, well, this time we're going to ask the gentleman to sit this out does not mean that, oh, that's it. The whole process, the open source project is doomed clearly not and so i just want to say to anybody who's going to come at us with those kinds of comments again just step to the side because we're going to be successful regardless of what you have to say i'm going to drink my coffee now and like yeah, 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 yeah. That was good. um so uh, michelle and i had the honor of being interviewed along with um ebony butler uh, yeah ebony i always remember ebony's twitter handle uh metal and coffee and and yes. the first name yes so that's her first name in my head um so i i just shared a link with nathan about the interview that we had um if you'd like to catch the replay of that one we'll include that for you in the show notes but during that time josepha actually shared with us that um it, her experience of stepping in the first time as a contributor in core was not as welcoming as it's come to be. And a big way that that shift transpired was having the women in non-binary release. So this interview took place at WordCamp Montclair. It was last summer, which is an amazing WordCamp. It's probably one of my favorites um, in terms of being a small local camp and, and the quality of the camp itself was just off the charts. So Josefa had shared her own experience and what led to that first women in non-binary release. And Michelle and I both were a part of that release. I was re-emerging over in the training team after taking some years away. Um, and we were on the throes of getting Learn launched. And so my work then shifted into what I had done previously at the events calendar, which is release comms. What do we need to update across all of the things? And what should we focus on? Because at the time, our team was like two or three people because we were rebuilding. Um, and our team had taken quite a hit during the pandemic and literally I was just coming back as well. So it was interesting to see how this was all happening. And that was when we had the, Michelle, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that release was the one where um, if you installed the, uh, was it TT1 that we were running with that you could start playing with some of the site editor features. Um, I think was sounds, in that release. That sounds right. Yeah. Yeah. Like it didn't ship with so. the default theme that included it, but if you went and got the default, th the, the, the block version of the default theme. So that was a pretty important release in that regard. And I was working with students in a boot camp trying to teach them, like some of them were new to WordPress, some were page builder people, they, some were classic theme people. And here we are coming in to test and give feedback because Francesca was asking for some of that feedback. Um, it created a, a space where I felt like I could speak because mm -hmm. before me showing up at the core channel, I didn't feel like my comments would be answered. I didn't feel that my voice would be welcomed. Like who does she think she is? Or, or instead of who does she think she is devs just being in a dev mindset and they speak code sometimes more than they speak human. And, um, <laughs> and so learning how to navigate those waters. And this is one of those things, again, where cross-team collaboration that we spoke of earlier, here are different teams across the WordPress project that are coming together in a more unified way, perhaps, than the project seen on releases before that time. And so... I'm excited. I was jumping out of my seat when at State of the Word, Laura had asked the question about when can we do one of these again? And Matt's like, yes, we could do one. And Josefa then quickly jumped into action that day on doing it, which was great. Um, mm -hmm. So this time through, we're doing a, uh, for 6.3, we're going to do ride-alongs. 
Um, I'm hoping to get a mentor so that the training team can have a proper release lead position within the release. So different mm -hmm. teams, different areas of the project have, like Doc's team has one. Um, there are people that handle the Marcoms, right? So I'd like to see the, the training team mature progress into this so that we have a more clear understanding across all of learn.wordpress.org, what should be updated and revised as close to release as we can, not making promises. Um, that's all about our contributor size and base. But I'm excited about the ride along opportunity. I'm hoping to bring some other folks along that perhaps not at a uh, release lead role, but just those that would like to start contributing um, and need that space, need to feel welcomed in that space, that they could join in on that opportunity as well. Is that the, it, it for you, Michelle, as well, and Courtney, is that is that like the number, I, I hate to break, try to break it down, but it feels like that is the thing which you're emphasizing above all others, that capacity to make things feel more welcoming. Mm -hmm. That's kind of, is that fairly near the apex of the, the reasons to yeah. do this? Because a lot mm -hmm. of the people who post comments, uh, which seem to push back on this, the the commentary always goes somewhere or something along the lines of we need the best team uh, just for, you know from anybody um which is always the, the the thing which you can say right but but from your perspective it sounds like you're saying look we're just welcoming a whole bunch of people who are feeling unwelcomed and this is this is a a, a good way to do it yeah, you know, I talk about underrepresentation a lot, right? And so one of the things that we talk about when it comes to representation, DEIB, all of those things, is making room at the table for people who have been traditionally not at the table. And so in some respects, that's some men, right? So it might be LGBTQ men, it could be neurodivergent, it could be people who are, um, you know, have a disability in one way or another. But far and wide, it tends more to be women and minorities than it does anything else. And so by creating a release squad that is women and non-binary people, now you have said, not only is there room at the table for you, you're the only ones at the table. Let's make this truly inviting. And oh, by the way, there are so many talented women and non-binary people in the world that nothing is going to suffer in one iteration of WordPress because we have excluded certain men from the process. So mm -hmm. if those men think that they are the only thing that makes this the very best release that it can be, they need to check their ego at the door and watch us make it happen. Um, you have uh, a, 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 a comment in here. I think it's Matt Graham. Forgive me, Matt. I'm not entirely sure. It's over on Facebook um, and you haven't authorized us, but I think it's you. Uh, puts in quotes, we didn't fail. He's quoting you, uh, Michelle, back at you. <laughs> exactly. In capital letters, uh, you have an enthusiastic supporter here. Yeah, that's really an interesting topic. Always going to guarantee yeah. to create some. Of course. Some interesting commentary, let's say. But uh, oh, thank you. I've enjoyed that little part of the conversation. Cameron Jones. Cameron, I've been following you on Facebook. Hey, Are Cameron. you in the UK yet, mate? Have you arrived? He's off to live in Brighton for six months in the UK. Oh, cool. And, uh, and I think the last post I saw, he was in an airport halfway. And maybe he's made it. Uh, Does that mean he'll case, be at, at, at <laughs> work case, Europe this summer? We'll be enjoying the gloom of the United Kingdom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're going to live to regret this, Cameron. Six months in the UK. What were you thinking? Uh, right, let's move on. Thank you so he much. He says he just got off the plane. Oh, geez. no <laughs> way is he doing this. No way. Cameron, put the put the phone down. Go and get a drink or something. Oh, <laughs> I look forward to seeing you at work here. Oh, that's uh, great. Just he's, got off he's the probably, plane. He's in an Uber, like, Tuned into this week in WordPress. At the correct time, it's not like bed o'clock. That's fabulous. Oh, Cameron, well, I'm pleased that you're on this side of the the uh, the, the world. It'll be really nice to have you, hopefully, over the next few weeks. And goodness me, you deserve some kind of award for tuning in in the taxi. That's uh, whew. Um, and he's got his WordCamp Europe ticket. Yay! Um, yeah, that'll be brilliant. I'm hoping I'm hoping to go, but I haven't quite clarified whether that's happening or yet. But if I am there, I'll definitely hang out with you, Cameron. That'd be lovely. If you're uh, there, I'll oh, let you drive my scooter again, Nathan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be something. Last time in in WordCamp US, I got to drive uh, Michelle's scooter, and honestly, it was a very comedic moment because I didn't realise it went faster than. 
I had it set on the turtle speed because yeah, I was, was afraid so he would he hit the hit the power and like knock it out all the servers <laughs> in the restaurant. So. That was great. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> Um, okay, so Courtney dropped in an article just at the last minute before the show uh, began. So I am actually just going to pass this one to Courtney. It's entitled, oh, it's by Marius uh, LJ, and it's called Request for Input Support Stats. We're not going to dwell on this for too long, but uh, sorry, Courtney, what were you thinking when you dropped this in? What was the going in your head? So always recognize that our folks that handle the support forums on WordPress are volunteering, whether they get to volunteer on company time or not, they are volunteering. That said, um, if you work at any plugin company, you get stats about how many things were completed, how many issues you, you solved that day, both as a single person and as a whole team. And maybe once a week or once a month, those stats are all aggregated together for reporting purposes. Um, what this proposal is seeking to do is have more of those stats for our support forum moderators. Um, and it looks like a little bit further down, they're going to use uh, a widget to sort of show what that looks like. But the bullet posts that are there are um, some of the ideas of what things they might want to have some stats about. And I thought this was really interesting, something that plugin and theme developers, those that have support purposes, um, so if you work at a plugin or a theme or you've created one, whether you're employed or not, you can nominate people within your plugin to be your official designated responders. And it shows a little badge beside their name when they're responding. But I thought that idea of the support forum team coming in and having some of the same stats, like the comparison between themes, plugins, general global forums in a given time frame. Um, I don't know if that's going to dig into compatibility that might one with the other might have. That would be kind of interesting. But also some like how many users got blocked. If we're seeing lots of users getting blocked, I know that the support forums face sock puppets, which are bots basically that are set out to spam the heck out of the forums. Um, any reports of topics handled in a certain time frame and how many things were resolved in a certain time frame. So it might give us ideas about when the forums are the most active around the globe, being that we're a 24 hour community. Um, when do we see spikes? Those might be the times that we would like to see more volunteers present, more contributors available. Uh, so I like the idea of there being some stats. If folks have other ideas for stats that might go in there nicely and you can envision a way, please go leave a comment on this post. I'm sure that the support team would thoroughly appreciate that. So uh, you're on make.wordpress.org. I will drop the link into the show notes, but it is called, you can Google it probably by now, Request for Input uh, Support Stats. And yeah, they they would like your feedback. So they've got four suggestions of possible things to drop into that right now, but they're looking for some more ideas. Did, Courtney, I don't know if you know, was this as a result of some WP drama? Did, was there something that happened which led to this conversation or was this simply... I love how I use WP drama like a noun there. Um, <laughs> or was this, um, or was this just philanthropic? Somebody thinking actually this would be quite a nice idea. I have something in my head which is saying there was something which happened last year which kind of led to this. But I could be. Yeah. Wrong. So the thing that happened last year, if you're going to mention WP drama, just in the chat mentions that you should say controversy in the way that you say it, not the way that the Americans say it. Oh, she controversy. Likes, yes, she likes when you say oh, that word. Oh, yes, <laughs> not the way the Americans say it. So there you go, Jess. I managed to take a in for you. Um, so a year ago, we saw that the stats about daily downloads was limited was on it. plugins, right? And it. so yep. um, I don't know that this was specifically related to that. There is a lot of requests for improvement of support forums. And um, it's not so much about the team members that are answering the issues that need to do that work. It's kind of more around the idea of this is infrastructure, this is website maintenance type of things. We're upgrading all across.org, but there have been ideas. If you talk to some of the long standing contributors in the WordPress project, um, Marius certainly is one of those. Jan Dabowski, who lives in the New York area, some folks in that area might know Jan from camps. They, they have some really good ideas of what they would like to see done to improve things. And if I look at the features of the support forums over the years, there hasn't been a lot of added features in that area. Um, and so I think this is probably just stemming from, no, this would actually help us with some additional goals and yeah. might also help the plugin and or theme community as well. Yeah. 
So once more, the post is called Request for Input Support Stats. I will link to it in the show notes, which I push out tomorrow. If you want to get the show notes, by the way, I keep talking about the show notes. You can find them on the wpbuilds.com website. You're just going to search for this episode 248. Um, or you can you can do the subscribe thing, like I mentioned at the beginning, and you'll get them in an email instead. So, Michelle, anything on that, or shall we press on? Let's press on. Okay. Indeedy. Let's do a bit of security. We don't really touch on security all that much because I feel it's really off, often way above my pay grade. But I think the, the primary focus for us mentioning security is just when something big comes along and it's worth alerting people to the fact that really this is fairly catastrophic. And uh, this one is a fairly big one, more in terms of its reach than its actual likelihood of happening to you. So in this case, uh, this is over on WordFence, but almost every security outlet, including actually, I believe even like the BBC in the UK picked up on this one because it was that big. I mean, 600,000 websites is a fairly big footprint. Um, This is if you have the Limit Login Attempts plugin, Uh, Essentially, it does what many of the security plugins have as an option. Um, It will limit. uh, So if somebody is is constantly trying to log into your site, you can can block them based upon IP address and probably some other criteria. It's obviously a very popular plugin. The version that you need to have is 1.7.2. So if you believe this is lurking anywhere in your website arsenal, then go and check it out. 1.7.1 and before is vulnerable. Um, There is a fairly constrained set of settings that you needed to apply within the plugin, which mitigates this quite a lot. Um, And I can't remember what they were. You had two. I can't remember, to be honest with you, but it's in this article. But there were two things that you needed to have in conjunction with each other. And the chances of that were, I guess, fairly strong, but not necessarily there. Needless to say, go check this out. The fact that it was broadcast on just general media meant that uh, important. There was a few other stories, but nothing I think with quite the reach of this one. Shall I just move on? Is is there anything to add to that? No. Just always stay vigilant, yeah. vigilant on your. There plugins. you go. Keep updating. Actually, that it, interesting conversation. I do my day. I do my plugin updates daily, including at the weekends. I log in. I've got software. I, you know, in my case, I use Main WP, but there's all sorts of other ones, right? But it's a daily event. Uh, sometimes twice daily. Just you know, if I'm gets to five o'clock and I'm a bit bored, I'll go in and and click update on them all once again. But um, I, that just seems like a good a good schedule to me. I know people talk about doing this weekly or what have you, but when something like this comes around and is being possibly exploited in the wild, uh, daily to me seems like the perfect regimen, especially as I'm sitting next to a computer. Just feels like the right thing to do. So, okay. Um, so we love WordPress, right? We love it. It's great. It's not to say there aren't some rivals because there are. Ghost is a rival. Um, I've never used this, right? But I, f- I found this one to be quite interesting. Now, I, I'm just going to guess. I'm going to go to WordPress.org, right? Let's just see how we do with this. I'm going to guess that they don't mention on here any other CMSs. Um, maybe that's because of market dominance. WordPress is de facto the CMS that most of the world is using. But I'm, I am fairly sure that it, there won't be too much in here about we are, in comparison to this, that, and the other thing, we're better. It's just about what we do, right? Here's what the product is. Download it. Buy a T-shirt in this case as well. But I just find <laughs> it curious when the you, you, a company want to do a sort of a slight hatchet job on WordPress and make comparisons. Clearly, that's what they want to do. So this is a commercial CMS. And when I say commercial, you can see the pricing. Let me just open that up. Oh, I've just opened it up and then immediately closed it again. That was clever. Um, starts at $9 <laughs> a month, goes up to sort of 200 bucks a month, depending on how many you know visitors and how many users you've got and Zapier and all those different kinds of things. Anyway, the point is you have to pay. But I just find these things kind of interesting. So there's a whole page called ghost.org mm-hmm. forward slash versus. I'm guessing there's a, there's a whole bunch of other ones. And then it's forward slash WordPress. And in it, they list all the things which... You can imagine it, right? It's just all the things which Ghost is great at, and then 
all the things which WordPress is rubbish at. Um, so as, as an example, they they say that native SEO, I don't even know what that means, but native SEO is available in Ghost. Uh, you've got memberships, paid subscriptions. There's a global CDN. You can do email newsletters, secure. It's fast. <laughs> And next to it, they say WordPress. <laughs> absolutely not big red cross. Absolutely not. Modern design and technology and so on. Anyway, there's about 10 different things. You can all ticks for Ghost, right? Yay, Ghost. So I will draw attention <laughs> but to they're that open very <laughs> bottom line, Nathan, where it says yes. open source, yes. Yeah. Um, Ghost can be installed on your own server. So it can and be free. Okay. Yes. And so I would then liken it to... Um, what they're saying as far as pricing to be maybe more compete against WordPress.com than maybe. against just any WordPress out there. Yeah. Um, and so when they're saying about extra plugins and those types of things, they might even be comparing that to .com. I'm not sure. Because if you were to use any managed hosting, they're not going to charge you for adding your plugins um, unless you're on .com and the, you need to upgrade to a paid account. Right? So... I think that some of that's a little bit deceptive. And I also would say that mm -hmm. a lot of folks that play with Ghost um, uh, will go more in the headless direction where if you want to dig into headless things, I think those that are self-hosting with Ghost, they're going to be developers, really dev-oriented, code-oriented folks that might want to do that. And I also am not sure that in WordPress, on WordPress.org, I don't think we even see content management system because the average person doesn't know what that means. <laughs> uh, I just don't think that CMS is a term that, you know, our end customers, our end clients of all the stuff that we do, they're just like, oh, WordPress, yeah, it's like the software that runs my stuff. They don't think CMS. So I don't know. I feel like it's right. a little misleading, but I've known a lot of devs to experiment with it. I also know that I think it was Ghost for a while that Chris Wegman was using. Chris is over at, there are two Chris Wegmans in our WordPress space. Chris that's at WP Engine. Um, and then he came back to WordPress for some reason. And so. <laughs> yeah, well, that was going to be my comment. I know quite a few people yeah. who've experimented with Ghost in all sorts of different scenarios. And yeah. one of them, Headless, was exactly, you hit the nail on the yeah. head. And uh, came back, WordPress, yeah. it just easier, more, more stuff to do. I just thought this was quite curious, you know, uh, man, mm -hmm. So essentially what they're trying to say is that WordPress is not only um, feature poor, which of course it is. We've done the 80-20 conversation already. It's supposed to not do a lot out of the box. You're supposed yeah. to, you know, add other things into it should you need them. Um, but they're making the point that, you know, you're going to be spending, it, it, honestly, it really does look like $1,000 a year or something along those lines. Yes, you can <laughs> if you wish to, but you can get a long way a really long way with free things. And so I don't know. I just, I, I find this sort of stuff a little bit, a little bit disingenuous when I read it. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, go and yeah, try I don't those, think I some of those features that it says that it has, like, it, you know, built in newsletter, CDN, all of that. I question if you roll that on your own hosting plan instead of going through Ghost's uh, paid plan, if those features are all still there. Mm, interesting. Yeah. Good. Good point. Yeah. I also think it's interesting that it's it's clearly comparing itself to WordPress.com, right? Like the managed hosting, mm. all these other things. But nowhere does it say .com in the entire article. So they're very deceptive in that they're making it look like it's just purely WordPress. Yeah, go and check it out. And we know there's a difference between WordPress and WordPress.com. So. Oh, anyway, I just thought it was quite interesting. Here we go. So look, very. if you've got 10 million views, you can save $24,000 annually uh, if you use ghost i'm sure it's brilliant i'm going to get that caveat in quickly i'm <laughs> that it's fabulous but anyway i have this kind of marketing is, yeah. is not for me just tell us why you're the really good you don't have to you don't have to trounce everybody else in the process so there we go okay speaking of really oh i'll just do a couple of quick comments and say the word controversy once more um <laughs> because <laughs> why not uh, and panther pro who is also british uh, i i don't know if he is or not oh no he just says the british pronunciation of controversy yeah we say beta and you say what do you say yeah. beta. beta 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 but it's like b-e-d isn't that a d beta um <laughs> i'm gonna get in trouble here <laughs> i shouldn't be the, yeah but the, the, the... It's, it's not even the td sound it's the 
F and A sound that you Better. Peter, I'd have a nice cup of tea with In my, Greek, it's actually with, better. Uh, better. So yes. Yes. It, uh, which is ironic because typically uh, better software is not better. Um, okay. There we go. No, but it, that's where the word alphabet comes from was alpha and beta. Um. In the Greek alphabet. Yes, of course. Yeah. Uh, nine nine credits of Greek in college yes, paid off. Yeah, today. for this one moment in your life and you've got to say that. Hi, uh, back to the back to the limit <laughs> login attempts plugin. It's ironic, says Rob Cairns, that a security plugin gets caught up in this mess. Yeah, yeah. I, oh yeah, I hadn't really thought about it from that point of view. Uh, Cameron He's in his hotel room, by the way. We can all relax. He's not. He's not that mad. Um, he's in his hotel, hopefully lying down. He's he's an update monthly kind of guy. That's interesting. Honestly, Cameron, I I couldn't do that. I literally would be panicking. There'd be like total panic. But he does say that he gets all the vulnerability reports coming through to him, and if there's anything that piques his interest, then uh, then he updates straight away. I guess publications like WP Builds and all the other ones that you can sign up for are helpful and RSS feeds for things like iThemes and WordFence and Security. If you get those in your RSS reader, then you get them as quickly as possible. Um, deceptive marketing and pricing, Andrew Palmer says, in WordPress is very prevalent as well. Yes, you're right. And that's a good point. Thank you, um, Andrew. That is a good point. It's just a bad habit with online marketing. Yeah, we shouldn't we shouldn't we should have rather made that point i'm sure you could probably find this um with plugins comparing themselves to other plugins so yes thank you thank you thank sure. you uh disingenuous indeed says peter ingersoll thank you right okay let's move along from ghost and talk about this fabulous thing i was contacted by mania kamal this week mania kamal has done many great things particularly um around the block editor he's got a new product it's called ai writer um, and this is a, a WordPress plugin which you can connect to your, um, what is it called? OpenAI. You can get an API key from OpenAI. Uh, you install this plugin, and then wherever you find text fields or various other fields, then it will inject. You press space. So to invoke it, all you do is click. So let's say you're in a paragraph block. Um, you just click space, and then it invokes the the prompt box. You then write your little OpenAI prompt, hit return. It does the thinking. Um, we've obviously got Andrew Palmer in. He's got Bertha AI, uh, which is another one which does broadly similar things. And then it will substitute your prompt into that block. I don't know if yours, Andrew, does what Manias does, because I haven't used Bertha AI too much. But one curious thing was that if it detects that in the response there was a quote, it'll put it in a quote block. And if it detects that something is is ought to be in a list, it creates a list block. So instead of it all being one paragraph, it'll be paragraph, 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 quote block, list block, back to paragraphs again. So it's quite curious in that respect. And Andrew, please just tell us if Bertha AI does that kind of thing as well. Uh, it's on sale right now. You can get it for $69. The the URL is probably quite long. Oh, no, it's actually really short. It's uh, shop.gutenberghub.com forward slash AI dash writer. And I will put it into the show notes. Michelle, I know you do a lot of writing, and Courtney, I know you do a ton of writing. Have you strayed into this whole AI business yet? Courtney's nodding. <laughs> I've played with it, but I haven't actually published anything that was AI generated other than my community minute on the WP Minute last week, which I had AI write completely. And then oh. divulged at the beginning and end of that minute that it had been written by AI because they did such a good job of what the WordPress community was. So I thought that was kind of an interesting um, exercise. Hmm. But uh, other than that, I haven't used it for writing yet. I have used it for writing when I'm doing things like my speaker bio. Um, oh, yeah. I get awkward about writing speaker bios. Yeah. But if I feed it like, here's all the stuff. Now, can you say it? in a in a better way where i have to provide quite a bit of information and i just list out like here's the stuff i do can you put it together in a way that makes sense for me i love to use it mm. for things like that and i also um i like how andrew says uh bertha doesn't do that yet <laughs> yet 
Yet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I have also used it for a little bit of um, like code feedback. I don't use it for blog post writing. One of the things that I do want to draw attention to, though, is that you're buying, in this case, you'll be buying the plugin, plus then you would have to provide your own API key. Right. And that is to, um, I've heard Morton say a couple of things in the past week that are really great. Morton, Rand Hendrickson, a lot of people in the WordPress community know Morton from doing the LinkedIn learning videos about WordPress. Yep. Uh, LinkedIn is, he he is mostly moving on to other parts of web yeah, dev these really days. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he still has some really great insights. One of them being that, um, a lot of folks are mixing up chat GPT with anything that is AI. Like we call, some people will refer to vacuuming as hoovering or the Americans will say Kleenex instead of tissue. Uh, there's there's things like that. So we're starting to slip into this chat GPT is everything that is AI chat writing style things. And so you have to think about if you're writing posts this way, um, one, the Yoast folks are Yoast Devolk himself has called out a bit and Taco as well about the consumption of resources that AI writing plays a part in. So you want to be mindful of that. Also, you could go into, you have to have an open AI key, even if you're paying for chat GPT, you need to have an open AI key if you're also going to provide that key into some of these tools. Pro tip, go set a price limit of how much you're willing to spend and the AI will stop you if you don't want to just completely deplete your bank account uh, in while you're experimenting around with things. So, so do that. And over the weekend, the other thing I was going to draw attention to from Morton is that he set up a pull request for agent GPT. There's some more GPT goodness here. Um, auto and agent GPT both. Auto is like you do it yourself in your terminal and or yep. you build things with it. Agent GPT is a browser-based user interface for Auto GPT, basically. Morton made a way that you can, he submitted a pull request so you could use GitHub code spaces and quickly fork it. Neither of those give you the code yet. Chat GPT or OpenAI's Playground will give you code back. Um, both of these, you might have to prompt it, but the idea of Agent or Auto is that you can tap into a bunch of APIs and you can run a series of things. So I really like the idea of where AI is taking us, but be mindful of the cost of resources that you're using, um, whether that's your personal bank account or the environmental impact of all of this AI Ooh, work. Right? good that's, mention, yeah. That's what, that's what I've seen nice. Yost, Balk, and Taco kind of elevating is like, think about the cost of the environmental resources, the computing power that you're now powering in such a rapid fire succession and what that impact is. So um, I like the idea. I like the uh, that that this one's going to be, yeah, Bertha generates code now. That's awesome. So I like that, that some of these options for WordPress are starting to make the work of pick the block for me. Just, just put the right thing in. I like it getting over um, mental blocks. Like writer's block is almost a thing of the past or my aversion to writing my speaker bio. I like that it can help me overcome these perceived barriers in my head, but I also want to be thoughtful about what that's doing to the planet. Yeah, that is yeah. a really good point. So let's deal with your speaker bio first. Is your <laughs> prompt, do you put in, give me back a bio, here's the things I do, and mm -hmm. then and then it comes out. So you just feed it the, the, the bare bones of what it is that you do, and then it pads it, Puts it in some kind of order, um, yes. filler words and all of that. Okay, that's. And really you can tell it space. like shorten that up or yeah, make yeah. it longer or don't yeah. use the word that you gave me. You can go back and forth with it a bit to get it where you want it to be. Um, I have a I have a Mac app called Short Circuit, which is new. It's in it's in beta, um, and it's uh, I'm I'm sort of testing it out, and it's the same principle. You plug in your mm -hmm. OpenAI key. And there's this nice thing on the right click. So once it gives you something back, so it's, especially if you've asked it something factual, you right click and it says fact check. And I really like that because then it just takes you to, it just opens up a tab for all of the sources 
that it used to gather that information. And then it's up to you to go and see whether, typically it's Wikipedia, funnily enough. The, I mean, I've asked it stupid things like, you know, what's the population of such and such a country or what's the capital of the, you know, something which is really easy for me to figure out. Nothing about genetic modifying genetic engineering with CRISPR or something like that you know um so I, so it was easy for me to check but but in in every case so far it's been completely accurate I guess maybe as I um got more complicated it might be more more difficult to trust but um yeah okay thank you Corey Michelle anything I just think, I mean, I, I when it first came out, I played with it a little bit. I, I asked it to write my bio, but just by giving it my name, and that was it. And it got a lot right, but it also had me working for a company I've never heard of before. So. Michelle, what it was actually doing was, it's that clever. It knows where you're going to end up. It's going to be a job. So next it's time, you, 10 years or next something time like you apply it. for a job and you, you look at the sheet and you think, oh, that's... But I, I also... <laughs> Remember, I had to generate a, a bio for you, oh, yeah. Nathan, too, and it got quite a few. It got quite a few things wrong, yeah. also. So yeah, it was funny. Yeah, yeah it was I good. Had, over the weekend, I had a chance to experiment. I got access to Bard, which is Google's version of things, and I asked it what the current version of WordPress, just to gauge how current its knowledge information is, and it told me six one one. And then I said. Ew. Um, are yeah. you sure? And it looked again, and then it told me that WordPress 6.4.2 had been released in June 13 of 2023. So one, it's ramping up the production of WordPress. Two, it made up its own release date. Um, yeah, so <laughs> WordPress, we we are embracing AI, but it's not always correct. So Use it, but yeah, check. yeah, you've got to click the fact check on it. But that I did yeah. find that to be a really useful feature because with one click, it just opened up like I don't know four tabs that it obviously yeah. compiled this information from, and and that was enough for me to sort of check yes. through. And I thought that was quite good. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you, Andrew Palmer made the point that Bertha can now uh, generate code for you as well. Uh, but Peter, back to Courtney's point, yeah, power consumption. My understanding, and and Andrew can probably speak to me about, or oh, speak to us about this because he's probably paying the bill. Um, my understanding is you need a fairly, a computer with a lot of grunt, shall we say, uh, in order to make uh, these kind of AI systems work. It's not something, uh, maybe that was more on the stable diffusion image creation side. I don't know, but yeah, do think about that, I guess. Don't like me go, right, what's the capital of, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Burkina Faso or something oh, really? like that. By the way, <laughs> Burkina Faso has the best named capital city in the world, just so that you know. Its name is Ouagadougou, which is... <laughs> Is oh, fact. It sounds like something that came from my my kids are really into the face. No, it's true. Bluey. it's true. It really sounds like something from Bluey. Go and, go and check it out. It's got the most unusual spelling as well. Uh, right. Okay. There we go. Thank you about for the AI chat. Let's move on. Let's go to uh, uh, pop ops. Right. It's um. I think it's fair to say that nobody ever liked a pop up. And yet my experience at the minute is that this is getting much, much worse. So we're moving away from WordPress a little bit typically, although not so much because you're building websites and you're probably making decisions about this kind of thing. I am sick to the back teeth of pop-ups. I truly, truly am. I am that guy that clears out all my cookies periodically just so that I get a, a sort of, I don't know, maybe it's once a week or something like that. So every time I go back to a website, I have to go through that consent process for cookies. I mean, obviously, there's some good uses for them, but things like cookie pop-ups or pop-ups where I just scroll the mouse out of the viewport with the intention of closing the window and all of that, and you just get in my face and I can't find how to dismiss it and all of that. Uh, eh, I don't know if it's just me, but I don't think it is because The Verge this week have put an article together uh, called The Revenge of the Pop-Up with a subtitle of Nobody Wants Them, <laughs> Nobody Likes Them. Why is the worst UI element of all time ubiquitous again? And I think that's right. They kind of came in, they kind of went away again, and now they seem to be all the rage again. And my my point is not only from an accessibility point of view, because I, I don't actually know this, but I imagine there's an awful lot of pitfalls that you could fall down in terms of accessibility, dismissing and tabbing into them and finding the close button and so on. Um, I just want them to go away, basically. Can we can we all agree to get rid of the pop-ups? Courtney, can you can you be in charge of that? 
<laughs> Actually, so if it's going to be me in charge, I'm checking out the Arc browser and it's built oh. off of Chrome, okay. Chromium. So it's similar to that, but it has a way of handling pop-ups that it asks you for more permissions to show them, basically. Um, ARC spelled how? A-R-C? A-R-C. Mm -hmm. And it, oh. you sign up to be on the, the wait list. The wait list is short, though. So they'll send you an email with a way to get it. Um, it's just a different way to organize your browsing experience so you don't have tab overwhelm. What a shame, and though, that we need to go to the lengths of install installing some unusual Different. browser yeah. yeah um all your chromebook your chrome extensions will work on it just just so you know but okay that's all how right. i am handling pop-ups these days is not <laughs> yeah well i must admit i'm using brave so <laughs> and that does a good yeah. job but it, it it's not perfect uh, yeah. sorry michelle i feel like over talked people no that's okay i i was interrupting but what i wanted to say was not everybody hates them um I will tell you that they still exist because they work. Yeah. Right? So they get yeah. your attention. People sign up for newsletters all the time because of that. But also, like, I don't disable them. I, I don't like them, just to be say be sure. But as somebody who is in marketing, I like to see what other people are doing constantly. So if you send me a survey, I'm probably going to take it so that I can see how good your survey design is or how nasty your survey design is if your site has a has a pop-up i'm reading it to see what it is you're trying to sell me before i click the x i'm constantly watching what others do marketing wise to so that i know kind of where the market is right now um and what is best practice versus worst practice and if you do have a pop-up what's the best practice for that pop-up is it occasional is it always is it every single page because i've definitely been on sites where as soon as you get anywhere near the navigation to switch to a different page within the same site you get a pop-up that says oh before you leave yes, and i'm like i wasn't oh. leaving i was going to your about page oh. <laughs> you know? i mean it's literally like so, you're yeah, in a so store it's just interesting. and you're about to, like you've gone into a, mm -hmm. a shop to i don't know you're browsing some clothes or something and you've decided you don't want to buy any clothes and you get to the door to leave and some dude comes like hang on a minute are you sure you want to leave it's like get out of the way <laughs> it's just wrong and <laughs> And pop-ups on your phone are even yeah. worse, right? Especially if it's not right-sized for mobile and you can't get to the X to X out, so you're just leaving the experience altogether. So there's a lot of good and bad with uh, – with uh, there's a lot of bad <laughs> with pop-ups, but there is some good right. as well depending on your use Yeah, of okay, right. Confession time, right? Okay, I've just thought of this. Okay, so there's my website. Tell me, is this bad, right? So you scroll down. I've got this – button here join the wp builds community it's a pop-up but you have to click the button and then you get that so that was a pop-up but you had to click the button so i thought well i'm saving you reloading another page to fill out a form is that bad because peacher in the comments has said pop-up should be dead dead in capital letters there's no equivocation well there. is it is that is it accessible what do you think does somebody know that a pop-up's going to open when they click that button no is, is it accessible no. Also, is it? It's over a parallax, which is also not accessible. So, if you want to, we could dive into your website, oh, Nathan. But perhaps we shouldn't. <laughs> yeah, and, another, Michelle and Peter. We'll, we'll take it no. offline. I got, I got a comment today because I released a uh, because I released a podcast this week uh, with Nick Steenhout uh, about accessibility. I got a comment. I, I believe it was on Twitter saying, "Can you sort out the blue in your footer?" Because apparently, apparently yeah, it's that's not really bad, at all. and I feel terrible now. So, I'm, I am going to make it a point to to go and solve a bit of this stuff. Okay, so, all right. So, oh, sorry. <laughs> I need to try harder. You uh, asked I, know, I did, I did. I completely <laughs> confess that I'm rubbish. Anyway, go and, uh, wrong one. Go and, go and read that article. It resonated a lot with me, even though I've got a pop-up. I kind of felt that I got out of jail a bit free there, but maybe not. Speaking of pop-ups, this is interesting. Cameron says, he's obviously in the UK now. Speaking of pop-ups, I've seen way more cookie pop-ups than I've ever have before in the whole hour that I've been in the UK. So maybe, maybe that's genuinely a problem for me in the UK that you guys are not having. Because almost every website that I go to, and Cameron, you'll find this, the first time you go, like 90% of websites will have one of those pop-ups saying, like, what do you want to do about cookies? And you always click, I don't know, or, you know, the, the, not the accept all, you click whatever the other option is, and then you uncheck everything and click save. And it's just like oh. Cameron. I think that that's a result of GDPR specifically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. 
So it's Cameron, the Cameron's way that already we've thinking of GDPR. leaving. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done in Europe. Yeah, yeah. That's it. That's all it. of Europe. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, so, okay. So, so, oh dear, your blue is. Oh <laughs> no. Okay, Peter, we'll talk. Let's just say that Peter will help me out. I'm sure because uh, she knows all this stuff. <laughs> right. Sure We're fast will. running out of time. Just a couple of quick ones. If you don't like those things and you're using the Firefox browser, you may have some mileage with this. There's a an add-on for Firefox. Uh, called Consentomatic. It's written by somebody called DK Goff, so it's not the uh, it's not the Firefox team, the Mozilla team, but it will automatically. You set up some constraints about what it should do if it sees a um, a cookie pop up, and then it will just deal with that on the fly automatically in the background. So in my case, it would be just reject them all, and then hopefully it would take that on for me. So that's kind of cool. But this is super cool, and I absolutely love this. This is about the best thing that happened since last Tuesday. Um, <laughs> this is the Mozilla, the Firefox browser. Um, every default version of Firefox from now on is going to store cookies. I think I've actually got the wrong tab open, which is a bit unfortunate. Never mind. Um, they are now going to store cookies per website. And they're calling it Cookie Jar. So it's going to store Facebook's cookies inside a Facebook cookie jar, same for Google, same for wherever you go, and they do not cross-pollinate. So typically, if you go to a browser, all the cookies go into the one jar. So every company on earth can make some use of those cookies wherever you go. But if you're using Firefox and you're up to date, from now on, that ability has been lost by those companies. So Facebook's are going to be fine tracking you all around the Facebook properties. Same with Google, but they're not going to be fine tracking you elsewhere. And I, I think that's the way it should have been from the very, very start. And I have apps. I know exactly. I was going to say I have absolutely no idea why. I know exactly why it didn't go that way. But the internet should have been decided. As Nathan says, is... banging down the gavel. That's how the internet <laughs> should have been. Um, anyway. This is the equivalent of never sticking your hand in the cookie jar yeah. to get a chocolate chip Ex cookie and ending up with oatmeal raisin. Exactly. Exactly. You <laughs> couldn't have said it better than myself. Um, they have a sandbox <laughs> mode for every site, says um, Nomad Skateboarding. Yeah. Previously, they had this sort of tab interface where you could lock the lock the cookies into a particular tab. So you could have a Facebook tab. And a, but this is just doesn't matter what tab you open. It's just going to deal with it. Uh, so I think that's uh, great. And Kay. Hello, Kay. I don't know if we've come across each other before. Hi, Kay. Um, she says, I appreciate the Mozilla news. Yeah. So I, I'm going to try. I'm going to try Mozilla's Firefox out. It's, it's on my computer, but I typically don't use it. I'm going to try it out as my default browser for a little while and see if any behavior has changed. Right. Sorry. Any commentary on that before we think about wrapping I, up? I think that it reflects Mozilla being an open source community and having the mindset of what a lot of open source supporters would tend to believe in. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, they've got no skin in the game, right? There's no... So obviously Chrome, um, Google want to hoover it all up. That's in their commercial interest. Why wouldn't they? It's helping their shareholders. But I don't want people hoovering it all up. I like my house messy. Put the hoover away. <laughs> uh, so, so there we go. Uh, thank you. I think that's it. We should probably knock it on the head and say thank you very much. I have one Do more you? thing. Sorry. Go on. One more th Not on that, but one more thing. I just want to say today is Jeff Chandler's first day at Stellar yeah. WP. And so I wanted to welcome him. I know he's in orientation, but he will listen to this later. But huh. um, he's been, you know, on on Twitter looking for a little while, and I'm really excited that I'm going to be on the same. What's he team. doing? So That's he's, so, part I, of, I, he's part of the marketing team. He's one of our marketing generalists oh. now over at Seller WP, starting today. So welcome. I Jeff. saw him described. Somebody described him online. It may have been in the repository email. I don't know if you get that one, but um, I think it might have been in there. He was described as Jeff Chandler, comma. WordPress historian, comma, and then it carried on. And I thought, oh, that's so cool. That's he such is. a great badge. If to you have, dig back it? through the early yeah. days of the tavern, and he's yeah. got some stuff before the tavern even around. Yeah. Oh, he congratulations. Knows, mm -hmm. he, if I ever get yeah. stumped, which is not often about remembering something in WordPress, I ask Jeff. Yes. Because Jeff knows. Jeff knows. <laughs> Jeff knows. <laughs> that's, yeah. oh, that's knows. Great. oh, I'm so pleased about And Courtney, that. he'll be at. Mm. He'll be at Buffalo. So Courtney and I will see him at WordCamp oh, Buffalo next well, week. I haven't been in night. person with him since, uh, I think, 2016 at WordCamp US. Mm. So it'll be good. 
Yeah. Absolutely lovely. Well, congratulations, Jeff, and uh, hopefully you and Michelle will be uh, hanging out a little bit more. That be, that's really nice. <laughs> okay, so that's it. We've uh, we've done this episode. We're going to wrap it up. It only remains for me to say super duper thank you to Courtney Robertson for joining us. Also, Michelle Frechette. Please do come back. Um, thank you for the many comments that we've got. There's a few new faces. We do this pretty much every Monday, probably like 48 weeks out of the year. So we should be back next uh, next week with some different guests, but please do join us. Um, there's only one thing remaining. You know what's coming, don't you? We've got to do the humiliating hand wave. Um, so give us a wave, give us a wave. Give us a... Oh, there we go. Fabulous. Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you, Michelle. Take it easy. Bye.